Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. In the video description below, you'll find all the information regarding the video, link to my website, Watch Complications, my Instagram, info on joining as a member, timeline, all that kind of good stuff. Now, some of you are probably regular viewers, but even if you're not, I've been thinking a lot lately about my watch channel and where it stands in sort of the ecosystem of YouTube watch channels. Get some categories out there. There's some that are just pure watchmaking and there's not even talking through them. It's just kind of showing visual processes through doing certain like maintenance activities and stuff. But really the big channels are entertainment dealers selling stuff and or yelling and controversy about what they like, what they don't like. Then, then you've got sort of the review channels, a couple big ones, but a lot of small ones, just people just reviewing watches, reciting spec sheets. If you weren't already aware, what I do here is more long form videos. Typically, if I'm doing a review, it's like I get into all the nitty gritty details, pros and cons. I'm doing something like a complication. I'll talk about how it works and every sort of technical aspect I can think of. And if I'm doing a, a watch build, walking through that process, creating custom part, every single step in that and doing sort of component or maintenance work. Again, sort of showing every step in the process, which is what people typically are looking for, want to know or find interesting. And that sort of detailed process in custom watch work tends to be some of the more popular things on my channel. How can I help encourage that growth? You can by sharing stuff about uh, my channel and videos and my website and blog posts and all that kind of fun stuff. I've just been thinking about it and giving people what kind of content they would enjoy as well as what I like doing. Uh, and I'll never get away from doing what I like doing. But if you have some comments or thoughts, feel free to share in the comments below. A popular area for me is custom watch work. And that has sort of two categories, custom watches, sort of beginning to end builds, create maybe custom cases, custom dials, custom hands, you know, sort of top to bottom. And I've shown a couple of those. I have more I need to show. And then there's custom parts that I make where I'll create like custom holders or spacers so that people can fit certain movements to certain cases. And this video is one of those projects for a client that I have that I've worked with a couple times. I do want to say that a couple other custom videos I do have coming soon, some of you will really like this one, is I have a series on creating a custom spacer and holder kit for fitting a Ronda 515, really the 515 series, which includes just a regular three hand watch, so a couple of GMTs to an SKX 007 case. Somebody wants to fit a Ronda 515 to a Seiko uh, 7002. So I, I bought a broken down one. And actually, aesthetically, it looks like it's in good shape. The movement's busted. But I'm going to do that one soon. I'm going to show a project on creating custom hands. First time I've gone down that road for a project. That's been an interesting epic novel. Can't wait to share more about that. So I will walk through the process, talk a little bit about the case and the movement details. I will show you the different options I came up with for the client that they could kind of choose from, sort of three different options. I'll show the draft file, 3D prints, and all that good stuff. Real quick before we get into it, wrist check, Christopher Ward, Sealander, C63, GMT, just a regular wear. Let's make some custom parts. Okay, so here you can see the movement in the case. Nice, shiny, golden looking movement. Test dial, as always, that way I can mess with it, touch it, <laughs> not worry about it getting dirty. And here's the generic dive case. I've used this case before for a build for the same customer. I've got a review on these generic dive cases that you can get from you know, eBay, AliExpress. You know, they change them a little bit so often uh, from one manufacturer to the next, they could be a little bit different. But this is just sort of a generic dive style case. One of the things I ran into on this particular project is that the case that I have and the case that the customer had, even though we bought them from the same seller, they were bought in different years. <laughs> and so they've changed or updated the interior a little bit. Case back has a little bit of a different height. Interior diameter is a little bit different, which led to some tweaking, you know, off and on through communication to get all the, the dimensions squared away. But it still got us through having at least a really close case to the one that was being used. The movement we're using in this is the Ronda Slim Tech 1015. Specifically the dash six for me because I like the date at six, but this one is on the visual showing the dash three with the date at three. 
The 1000 series has a variety of movements, a lot of interchangeable parts across the series using the same base, fairly common for watch complication, uh, watch movement manufacturers. Diameter of the movements, 26 millimeters, important spec, case fitting. You know, I check against the documentation like this, but then the case we're putting it in, I have to measure those things. And then it's really, okay, creating what looks like it's in line with the specs, doing a print, and every 3D printer might be a little bit different. Material can make a little bit of a difference, but basically make a design, print, and then adjust, see what needs to be made bigger, smaller, etc., and then redesign, reprint, back and forth until you get to a final state for the design. One of the other things that's important to get off the documentation is the locations of the casing screws and the tabs for those. You can see the dial feet locations might be something you have to consider. The tabs where you want maybe cutouts, there's sort of in-croppings and out-croppings on movements where you might want to create a little tab or something where any kind of tension that might help keep everything from rotating where you could attach something to the movement where the dial feet are so you want to avoid those locations depending on what kind of movement you know holder you're creating so the technical documentation comes in handy that's the movement we're going with but really what we need to know is some of the basic diameter stuff height getting it to the right location inside the case so this build had two parts one is usually with a quartz movement, and these are particularly thin. I mean, the name of the series is Slimline. Whenever you put it in the case, meant for a particular dial size or whatever, you're going to end up needing to raise the movement and everything so that the stem height is correct. I've gone over this in detail in some other videos. So a lot of times what you'll need is either a dial side or a movement side spacer. And that all comes down to how tall the hand posts are that you're using on either the hands or the, or the movement itself for the pins. A lot of times dial side spacer is the option that people want and that was the case here. The height on this spacer is 1.5 millimeter. I think that's the biggest one I've had so far but as you'll see and depending on what dial color you're using white or black usually work okay. You could do something else that con either contrasts for a, kind of a different look or something that's try to, to blend in a little bit. You can also spray paint these. It's PLA so paintable. You could also use some sort of metal 3D printing if you wanted to. And the spacer is going to make it so that when we put the dial and movement in there that the stem is sitting at the right height. Let me try to show you from the side. You can see that the stem is now sitting at the correct height so there's no vertical tension on the stem which would be bad. Okay, stems can snap pretty easy. So that was part of the first Step, getting the stem height correct means a spacer typically with a quartz movement in a dive style case. Had the same issue with the SKX and the Ronda 515 and many other little projects that I've done in the past. Once you have the spacer, what do we do on the back end? Well, this dive case comes with this metal ring. This is the holder for the movement that it's meant to go with. I can't remember which one it is, maybe a Miyota. 8215 or something like that. You could use this. So just print up the spacer, put the movement on the dial, and you can see that this has a stem cut out for it right there as well. You could just pop that in the case and look how flush that sits. The case will come back will go on, it'll screw down. Problem is, you can kind of see here that this ring sort of gets in the way between the if you're going to put a case clamp in the edge of the case to create some good tension that will keep it solid in place from rotating, that kind of thing. Well, it cuts in the way of that. Stem is fine, plenty of space for that. So, could do this, but then all the tension is going to be on the stem because you don't have any case clamps down here. And there's nothing on top of this that's pressing against the case back, which is an option I go with sometimes as well. It does sit snug. There's just enough space in there that the case back, the threads on the case back right here, can screw down. But then you'll see, you know, it starts rotating. So if you're rotating, it will create some tension with the stem, unless you have it all secured. So, you know, doesn't shake too much. I know you can't hear on here, but if you hold this up to here and shake it, you hear a little bit of movement. That's because there's no pressure against the case back. The movement's not quite 100% snug against the edge of the interior of the case. So not the best option. Option one is not an option. So let's take this out. 
So what's a little bit of a better option? Let me zoom out here. You can see a series of prints. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know, kind of go through a process, you know, get creating a starting point, kind of tweaking a little bit, tweaking a little bit until I get it exactly right. One of the things that I needed to make for this was a couple tabs to go into the case screw locations on the movement, give it a little bit extra security. You could mill that out and attach it if you wanted to. You got the cutout for the stem making sure it doesn't interfere. And then it's a matter of getting the height and diameters correct for what might fit against the case bag once this is high enough. So go through a series of those. You can see that one's a lot higher. Again, playing around with the diameter, the thickness of this top layer a little bit. And one of the things I mentioned was the case back on my case, the original one, which was bought some time ago, over a year ago, almost two years ago probably, and sort of a newer updated model of this case is that this interior diameter and the angle here on the interior of the case back is a little bit different. It's a lot more shallow on the newer one. So we had to contend with that a little bit. You'll see what our solution was in a sec. But basically go through a series of these things and end up with a final version that works for this movement in the case that I have. Really thin here on top. Let me show you how that fits against the case back. So once this is secured, see it sits inside of that ledge, just, just on the edge of the interior of that slope. Of course, then this will sit nice and snug on the interior of the watch case. Cut out for stem, tabs, if you want to add a little bit more security to it. Let's pop this in. Kind of snaps down a little bit tabs. Again, you could drill that out and attach it if you wanted to. You can see the stem there. Let's rotate this thing around a little bit like so. And then it's at the right height for the case back to fit in there. And this one's a little bit taller, the new case back shallower where this would need to be about flush probably with the interior as you see there, but that will sit down nicely and screw down. Same sort of rotational effect as using this ring, that if you don't screw it to the movement or have a case clamp or something or the stem in it, you don't wanna put all the pressure on the stem because you don't wanna break it. And that's what could potentially happen here if you don't you know, be careful about it. That's one possible solution that could have been used on this particular build, but there was one other option. So let's take a look at that. Here we have the third option that I think the client liked the most and decided on using for this particular build. And that was me just creating a almost complete circle. You can see I printed this one in black. It's around the edge here, which sits at the same height as the edge of the movement. So you can use a case clamp and screw flush with it, which will help secure it to the case overall and keep pressure around the edge of the case because there's a little bit of a lip underneath the side. I think this one has enough space on the bottom side if you wanted a little bit more uh, stability in the actual piece of PLA or plastic or copper, whatever you're printing with, having a complete circle would add a little bit more stability, but it's, it's okay this way as well. Once the case clamps are installed and the stems in there, it's not going to move. This case, keep in mind, is just a little bit different in terms of the spec, the diameter than the case that the holder was actually going to end up going into. They've updated the case itself a little bit since I bought it. There's a little bit of rotation movement there, which is good. You want a little bit of freedom of movement. Not a ton, but a little bit. And on the case that the customer is using, this fits really tight in here. Mine has a little bit of movement, but again, once you secure those case clamps and stem, it's not going anywhere. Even if I used it in this case, it's fine. Let me pop the case clamp on here so you can kind of see what this would look like. So that'll sit in there nice and snug in that location. You can then attach the screw and you can see that this goes underneath the lip. And once you start screwing that down, that pressure will hold it inside the case. And there's one on the other side of the movement down here as well. Let's put those couple case clamps in, screw them down, stem in. This thing's nice and snug. And I think that's what the person ended up deciding at the end of the day was the solution they wanted. And it worked pretty well. And you can see in the snippets I'm throwing in of how it looks inside of their case. So let me pop the plastic ring out here so you can see what it looks like. Whoop, whoop. Goes flying. At least it's not like a screw or a spring or something you're ever gonna find again. But you can see this is just a plastic ring. Again, you could put a connector top or bottom on this to, to give it a little bit more stability, but this works okay. 
got a height and diameter that work for the specific movement case and gives that leverage so you can put the case clamps in, but that's, that's all it looks like. So that's the one they went with. All right, so what you see here in the CAD file is the design progression and sort of my process of what the design looked like. So start over here with basic, you know, diameter of the rings and the tabs where those would go can move in and out depending on what diameter is dealing with. Here I was just sort of playing around with potential thicknesses as I built up toward the case back. And you can see what it started to look like as I was adding in tabs of a certain height, the ring on top toward the case back. You see the cutout here for the stem has to be the right length. Tabs here on the basic ring showed you this was one option that could have been used. And kind of what sort of ended up being was something similar to this, but kind of started down this path, building toward the case back. What I started with first, I think this entire drawing was just the dial side spacer, because that's just an easy way to get started. Two circles, give it some height, cut out the interior diameter and you're left with the ring, 3D print it, you're good to go. Where it, you know, really the tweaking came into play as you can see down here. This is the final design of the holder that presses against the case back. If I was doing this for myself, might choose this if I secure the tabs to the movement. So you get the cut out for the stem. These have to be a certain amount of thickness or else it's hard for a 3D printer to print those. But this works for my case back, but my client's was a little bit more shallow, so really wasn't going to be the best approach. Also had the decision, do we have the tabs or not? It could go either way, but if you're going to use the case clamps like I showed in the uh, overview there of showing the actual movement and spacers, then it was really best to go this route with just a plain ring so that the case can, clamps can be applied to get the pressure against the case. And then it's really a decision of, do you have any connection between the sides where the stem cutout is? You can see this one down here has a little bit. Could also put in a little bit over here as well if you really wanted to, but either way really works. So here we have the final versions of the design. Spacer ring up here. Got the holder if you want to go press against case back with the tabs, or if you want to go case clamp, here's the ring that you would need to, to do that. Lots of options. I mean, your custom making parts, throw these on the 3D printer, good to go. Well, thanks everyone for joining me. Hope you got something out of it. And if you have questions, comments, thoughts, please give me a shout out in the comments below. Lots more coming soon. Check out the info in the video description and my site if you want a lot more detail or if you want some custom parts yourself, fill out the form. Happy to talk to you about your own projects. And let's see if we can get this channel growing even a little bit faster. Thanks everyone.